Biology courses tend to assume that the only thing that gets used in uh, respiration is glucose, but that's not the case. Um, amino acids and fats are both used in aerobic respiration to produce ATP. We're going to look at that very quickly. So to summarize, the ester bond is hydrolyzed in the triglycerides. The ester bond is between the glycerol and the fatty acids. After having hydrolyzed that ester bond, the glycerol is converted to triosphosphate and goes into the middle of glycolysis where it therefore produces pyruvate which then enters the link reaction. The fatty acids are hydrolyzed to form acetyls which are the two carbon fragments. They go into the Krebs cycle. Now amino acids vary in their R group so what happens to them um, is different for each particular amino acid. First step is it's deaminated in the liver this produces ammonia that's then converted into urea by being converted by combined with carbon dioxide and then you eliminate it in the kidney into your urine. Um, the remnants are a keto acid. Remember that will vary in shape, vary in structure depending on the nature of the R group of the amino acid. That goes into the link reaction or Krebs cycle um, and powers the production of more ATPs and NADs, etc. Okay, um, so let's have a look at fats to start with. So when we have a fat, we have a three carbon glycerol, and that's joined by ester bond to a fatty acid. And these fatty acids vary in length from 17 carbons to 35 carbons, and there are unsaturated and saturated fats. I'm sure you can remember plenty about that. First step here is we hydrolyze the ester bond. Having done that, we've been produced a three carbon glycerol. That three carbon glycerol then gets converted into triosphosphate. Now that triosphosphate is then able to enter the middle of the glycolysis. Because remember in glycolysis, we had glucose, being phosphorylated twice to give you a hexose biphosphate and that hexose biphosphate then splitting to give you two three carbon triosphosphates. Um, those triosphosphates are then used to produce pyruvate um, with the production of two ATPs through substrate level phosphorylation and additionally the production of two reduced NADs. And the reduced NADs then go off to the electron transport chain on the inner mitochondrial membrane. Um, so the glycerol, the three carbon glycerol, um, gets turned into triosphosphate and then that powers the um, rest of respiration. The if you remember that the link reaction involves taking the three carbon pyruvate and decarboxylating it and at the same time dehydrogenating it again to produce more NAD, NADH, here we go. Now remember all of this occurs in the mitochondrion, in the matrix, so after you've produced the pyruvate, the pyruvate goes into the mitochondrial matrix. It's undergoing the link reaction to produce your two carbon acetyl fragment. Now this is where the fatty acid that's been produced as a result of the hydrolysis of the triglyceride, the um, that gets chopped up and it gets chopped up into two carbon fragments and those two carbon fragments are your acetyl fragments and they go in here. So the acetyl fragment is then turned into acetyl coenzyme A and that joins with the four carbon oxaloacetate which then powers the Krebs cycle. Now remember, a um, fatty acid can be many, um, many carbons, so it can be 35 carbons, so we can chop that up to produce 
lots and lots of acetals and those lots of acetals all power the um, Krebs cycle because they turned into acetyl CoA and they join with oxaloacetate to form citrate. Um, remember the citrate gets decarboxylated with the production of NAD and also of FAD. So these are going to NAD and here going to more NADH and we produce an ATP through substrate level phosphorylation and we produce an FAD and we produce carbon two carbon dioxides through again decarboxylation awesome right next step is to consider the amino acids so with an amino acid, we have a amine group, a central carbon, a hydrogen, a another carbon, double bond, oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen, and then we have the mythical R group. Remember, there's no R in the periodic table. R stands for the variable group. So the simplest you can have here is a hydrogen. We can have lots of others. So this, for instance, here is an alanine with a carbon hydrogen. So, <coughs> so amino acids are deaminated in the liver. Uh, with D-amine, removal of the amine group, and that is turned into ammonia. Now, ammonia is a toxic compound that interferes with oxidative phosphorylation, so that's very quickly turned into urea. And the urea passes into your blood plasma and then is eliminated from your body in the kidney. Now, what we're left with depends on the nature of the R group. So you're left with this keto acid and depending what the R group is affects where that then enters the Krebs cycle. So it can, depending on the R group, be turned into pyruvate. It can be turned into acetyl. It can be turned into a 6-carbon, a 5-carbon, a 4-carbon. It all depends on what the R group is as to where it enters um, aerobic respiration. Okay, sorry for rambling on a bit. Hope that made sense. Thank you for watching to the end, and please subscribe.